this is <clears throat> Brown's disease is one of my favorite topics. For a long period of time, I have been doing this. Now, Blount's disease is a disorder of proximal tibial growth plague, <coughs> medially causing progressive virus, knee malalignment in children and adolescents. Mostly, it is associated with early onset walking. Obesity and African American children are more prone to it, and bilaterals are more common than unilateral. There are so many synonyms known by as Blount's disease is known, but we prefer to use the term Blount's disease. Some people use the terminology infantile tibia vera, but uh, other terminologies such as got them from the book, but uh, I don't see anybody using that. Now, clinical features are a lot similar to physiological genuvarum. Many of these children are obese, and when they walk, they have do have a lateral thrust on walking, as you can see in this picture. Now, what are the radiological features? There are some distinct radiological features which distinguish blouts from a physiological genuvarum. One of them is virus angulation at the epiphyseal metaphyseal junction. Now, widened irregular facial line on the medial side. That is one of the cl very classical features. The medially sloped epiphysis is another feature. And prominent beaking of the medial metaphysis and lateral subluxation of the tibia. Now, when you put all these features together, you can reasonably assume that it is a Blount's disease. Differential diagnosis is physiological genuvarum, but many of the radiological features are not there as, as you see in Blounts. Genuvarum associated with rickets, I don't think there will be much confusion about that. Skeletal dysplasias, again, there's not a lot, lot of confusion. And post-infectious, I'm sure anybody can identify it from the X-ray. Now, there are Blounts disease goes by various stages, as described by Langer's coil, stage one to two where complete restoration is common. Stage three and four restoration is possible. There will be some amount of metaphyseal, no, sorry, epiphyseal depression and growth plate, uh, uh, but the growth, medial growth plate is still intact. Stage five and six, most of the time, the medial growth plate is fused and there's quite a lot of epiphyseal depression, articular depression. Now, the prognosis using the Langen's coil classification or staging is not very accurate for non-whites. He basically described in the Scandinavian population. Stages can occur in non, non, earlier in non-whites. Sometimes it, one stage, they can skip a stage and progress to stage six also, worse in black girls. And uh, we don't have much data on the Indian population. Now, treatment depends on what stage and age. So when you have stage one and two between ages of two and three years, I would prefer conservative treatment, provided the patient is less than three years of age. And in unilateral cases, there's almost uh, uh, nearly 100% success. But if it's a bilateral case, obese child, ligamentous laxity, late initiation of treatment after three years of age, there is a high risk of failure of conservative treatment. This is one of, my, uh, one of the cases from my professor, where it was treated conservatively with the brace. Now, the question is whether you use daytime brace, nighttime brace, or 24 hours. The results have been same. Whether you use it 24 hours or nighttime or daytime, ultimately, it's the same result. So I would prefer to use the brace while the child is walking. Makes a little more mechanical lo lo logic. Now, stage one and two, more than three years, it's a metaphyseal corrective osteotomy and fixation, either with acute or gradual correction external or internal fixation and we prefer to overcorrect to five to six degree of valgus. This is for a patient with uh, stage two and one side is stage three, metaphyseal osteotomy and that's the end result. We overcorrected it to about five to six degree of valgus and this is before and this is After the almost a normal looking gait. Now, acute corrections can be done with in these early stages with the plaster alone. And you get a good correction. And if there is some under correction, over correction, you can wet the plaster also. Stage three, corrective osteotomy, most of the time metaphyseal alone. And delaying surgery, there is a higher chance of recurrence. 
this is a child with uh, stage 3 we did an arthrogram to just to make sure that the articular there is no articular depression although it looked on x-ray by uh, that way bilateral illusory frame fixation sorry bilateral illusory frame fixation and that is a correction that we achieved can also do acute correction with the uh, kys also osteotomy and kys stage four and five they are more more and more serious facial arrest has already occurred although not seen radiologically <coughs> now we must understand that there are two deformities metafacial and intraarticular and treatment must be individualized there is an epifacial or intraarticular deformity and a metafacial deformity now less than seven years what is recommended is medial epifacial osis and interposition <coughs> material plus or minus metafacial osteotomy but many of these patients present more than seven years of age so epifacial is by and large ineffective and intraarticular osteotomy and elevation is recommended this is a girl with stage four disease we did the arthrogram medial articular depression intraarticular osteotomy elevation and fibula strut graph and the metafacial virus deformity is now rather obvious and stage two after eight weeks illusory frame to correct the metafacial deformity and that is after the correction and now she's walking with the frame on this is the end result stage six is is really bad it's more a medial bony bridge and epifacial closure and deformity will progress as long as the growth continues now there are definitely two deformities intraarticular and extraarticular and will need two osteotomies, intraarticular osteotomy and a metafacial osteotomy. And I would prefer to do it in stages. Now, this is an 11 year old girl previously operated at seven years of age with only metafacial osteotomy. We don't know what stage was she was at that time uh, when she had the procedure at seven years. Now, this is her picture. This is her gait. There is some amount of internal rotation also, especially on the right side. That is the x-ray, stress views. The epifacial depression is there. And the metafacial virus. We measured the procurvatum. Uh, it was an oblique plane deformity on the right. So we planned. We didn't know whether there was a rotational deformity. We, we took a CT scan, the, not for the rotational deformity, just to see the intraarticular deformity. The step one was intraarticular correction on both sides and screw fixation and fibula strut grafting to just to hold the osteotomy in place. Now we have a virus deformity on the right and an oblique plane deformity on the left. Illusero frame fitted for the metafacial deformity on the left side for the oblique plane deformity. The correction started. Now when the angular deformity was corrected, the internal rotation deformity was obvious on the right side. So we did a rotational correction and you can see the amount of translation that has occurred, which is nearly 100%. This is the full correction and patient walking with the frame on. That is the pre ring removal x-rays. This is after ring removal, the mechanical axis is restored. Although there is a zigzagging. This is the initial deformity. And that's it after correction. Six years later, pull up. Almost the bone is remodeled so pretty well. Mechanical axis is restored. This is a normal gait. There are it's Elizabeth is not the only option. There are you can use an internal fixation, but the problem is you cannot do further adjustments after the surgery there might be a risk of under over correction but sometimes things can turn a little nasty with danger of compartment syndrome and infection with internal fixation especially acute corrections rab osteotomy is a good procedure in the early stages a single oblique plane cut allows simultaneous correction of virus and internal rotation and you can do some post-operative wedging also to obtain the appropriate position guided growth i have not much experience with it this is from my teacher 
provided for, you can do it for mild to moderate deformity, at least two years of growth remaining, and limited LLD, and the, as long as the patient is not too heavy. MRI, you don't really need an MRI. Some people say that you need to for the medial growth plate status or the medial articular depression, but all these can be seen well with an X-ray or an arthrogram. And again, you need the assistance of a radiologist to interpret the MRI. And both the cases anyway need sedation or anesthesia. So summary, especially after stage three, consider the possibility of intraarticular deformity. An arthrogram is probably one of the very invaluable investigations to define the intraarticular deformity. After correction of the intraarticular deformity, assess the location and magnitude of the metaphyseal deformity. Decide on acute correction, gradual correction, internal fixation, external fixation. And acute correction, keep in mind the compartment syndrome over and under correction. Now, don't be terrified of a grotesque deformity. Keep the patella straight and the deformity becomes clear. Clinically examine the patient, proper x-rays, do malalignment tests, locate the cora and coras, CT, MRI if needed. Decide what your, what your correction is going to be, acute or gradual, internal or external fixation. Decide your implant. Again, the most important thing, spend time with the patient and the parents, discuss pros and cons. Thank you. Thank you.